and welcome to the Indian River State College online purchasing tutorial for financial aid, scholarship, and third-party accounts. Before we get started, let's break this process down into five easy steps. The account setup, your course materials selection and checkout process, your delivery options, your payment methods, and order verification. Step 1. Account Setup. Before we get started on your bookstore account setup, it's important that we check your records on Workday. The following information must match your Workday records when you make your online purchasing account in order to process purchase. Your full name, your student ID number, your address, your phone number, and your student email. If you're having any issues with your student email, go to www.irsc.edu slash admissions slash rivermail dot html. Okay, so your first step is going to be to go to www.bookstore.irsc.edu. From here, you'll get to the main bookstore webpage, where you can start by going to the top right-hand corner and clicking the sign-in button. This will take you to the customer sign-in screen, where you'll be able to sign in in the future once your account is created. Click the Create an Account button. This is where you'll be able to input your account information, including your student email, your account preferences, and the shipping information that you have connected to your Workday account. After you have everything filled in, click the Create My Account button. Step 2A, Selecting Course Materials. It is important to note that only textbooks and access codes can be purchased online through non-credit card means at this time. Okay, so we're going to start off on the bookstore website, and we're going to click textbooks and then buy textbooks. This is going to take you to the course screen where you select a couple different things. You're going to need to choose your term, which is the semester you're shopping for, the department, which is the first three letters of the course you're in, your actual course number, and then the section that you're in. All right, once you get to the course materials page, you'll see the books that you need, and you can select the ones that you would like to purchase by putting them into your cart, and then you can move on to the checkout screen. Also, keep in mind that you can remove these items from your cart at any time. Step 2B, checkout. Okay, so now you start the checkout process. So once you get a view of your cart and you make sure that everything looks accurate, you're going to go ahead and hit checkout and then you'll be prompted to log in once more. Once you've logged in, you'll get asked to check your preferences. If it's a textbook, you may have to um, select if you want it to be new, overused. If you're okay with the used book, and there is one available, you just go ahead and don't check anything. And then you continue to your shipping info. Step three, delivery options. When you reach the shipping info screen, you should see two options for your shipping method, US mail, and curbside pickup. Let's take a moment to discuss what each option means and what information you will need for each one. Let's start with curbside pickup. This is a free option for if you intend to pick up your order at IRSC main campus or a branch campus location. Orders made Monday through Friday before 3 p.m. will be available at your chosen site location the following business day in the time block indicated below. Choose one of the locations and their time slots below and type that into your special instructions box on your order. The locations and time slots are Main Campus in Fort Pierce, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Dixon Hendry Campus in Okeechobee, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Mueller Campus in Vero Beach, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pruitt Campus in St. Lucie West, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Chastain Campus in Stewart, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Your second delivery option is U.S. Mail, which could have a minimum $7 fee added on for shipping and handling, which we will discuss in further detail in the payment option. This is the method you would use if you intend to have your order shipped to you. Make sure that the address that you are using matches your records and workday. Your shipping info should already be preset uh, from when you created your account. So once you've verified that everything is correct, you can click the Continue to Payment Info to move on to the payment stage. Step four, payment methods. Okay, so now that you're at the payment info screen, you can take a look at your billing address. If it is the same as your shipping address, you can leave that box checked as you can see here. 
you're going to need your student ID to be typed in, and then you will need to select your payment method. Now, if you're planning on using financial aid, a scholarship, or a third-party account, you would want to select that. But there might be a couple things that might um, cause you to split your payments. So let's talk about that. Okay, so a couple important notes for splitting payments between a credit card and financial aid, scholarship, or third party. First off, there is a $7 shipping and handling charge for online orders, and it is possibly covered by some accounts, but not all. So if you need to use a credit card to pay for shipping and handling, you will need to choose that option first. This will automatically generate the total amount to your card. You would then choose your financial aid, scholarship, or third party option and put the amount of your charge without the shipping and handling. So you would subtract that $7. And then your credit card transaction will automatically change to $7. After that, you'll want to review your order and then complete it, and then move on to the verification step. So let's see this payment split process in action. So I'm going to start by um, typing in my student ID, since I've already determined that my shipping and billing address is the same. And now I need to choose my payment method. And since I'm splitting payments, I'm going to want to start with my credit card. So essentially, I would select credit card and then type in all my credit card information and then click Apply Payment. I'm going to skip past that part for security reasons. But as you can see at the right here, uh, my credit card is taking the entire total for $64.66. But we only want our credit card to cover the $7 of shipping and handling. So I'm going to select the payment option now for financial aid, scholarship, and third party. And then I'm going to put in my student ID. And I'm going to need to change my amount from the $64.66 total to subtract the $7 shipping and handling. Keep in mind, you will only need to do this method if your account does not already cover the $7 of shipping and handling. But for the sake of this example, 64 minus 7 is going to be 57. So I'm going to put in $57.66. I'm going to apply that. And as you can see here, my account is covering the majority of the payment, and my credit card has now automatically changed to the $7 that was remaining. And that is how you split a payment. And now I can move on and review my order. So moving along with that same exact example, you can see I'm at the review screen here. I'm just going to verify all of my information, make sure everything is correct. And then at the very end, I will scroll down and hit place my order to complete. Step five, verifying orders. So now you have one final step left to go. After your order is completed, you'll want to use your student email to email rsweborders at irsc.edu. In your email, you'll want to include the following. In the subject line and the body of the email, include your web order number. Also, include a copy of your government-issued photo ID. Photos are acceptable for this. A copy of your schedule. Screenshots are fine. And you'll want to include the following statement in the body of the email. I acknowledge that I am authorizing the payment of this transaction online using my financial aid, scholarship, or third-party account as tender. I understand that should my coverage be reduced, that I will be responsible for paying for any items not covered by financial aid, scholarship, or third-party coverage. Keep in mind that this fee will be covered by your financial aid or scholarship if you have enough funds to cover it. At the end, type your name to signify a signature after the statement. If you are using a third-party sponsorship, please look at the list of entities below, and if you were provided a voucher, you must include that in your email as well. If you want to repeat any future orders, your account will already be set up, so all you'll need to do is just repeat the steps from before, and you'll be good to go. So that's it. You've officially mastered making online purchases with financial aid, scholarship, or third-party sponsorship accounts. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.